Hello everyone, my name is Gaurav Kumar. I work for the Uber's compute platform team in Amsterdam. Uh, unfortunately, my colleague Amit uh, couldn't be here today due to logistical reasons, so I'll be leading this session solo. Uh, in my roles and responsibilities at Compute Platform, we are mostly focused on uh, running uh, different kinds of workloads. And uh, in this particular talk, I'll be talking about uh, scheduling GPU workloads on Kubernetes and the kind of insights that we have had so far while scheduling such workloads. So yeah, let's get started. Uh, as the outline of the talk, I just want to clarify what this talk is not about. So this talk is not about how to set up GPU workloads uh, uh, at the beginning. So basically, uh, I'll not talk about how to set up your clusters to run GPU workloads. Rather, once you've set your clusters up, what sort of challenges and uh, requirements that you face along the way. I would go through a brief overview of how compute works at Uber. And uh, I'll give an overview of Kubernetes clusters for GPUs at Uber. Uh, after that, I'll cover the sections about efficiency and precision, what are the goals and the challenges and the solutions uh, that we implemented to achieve, achieve uh, these uh, efficiency and precision targets. I'll also cover a little bit about benefits for scheduling uh, efficiently and precisely on the Kubernetes clusters. We'll cover some common pitfalls that we encountered along the way uh, to enable such GPU workloads. I'll briefly touch on future work that we have in the plans. And if we have time, uh, we'll cover like a short Q&A session as well. This is the overview of compute at Uber. At the top, we have two federation layers. Uh, we have a stateless federation layer and a batch federation layer. These federation layers manage uh, resources efficiently and uh, they, they are responsible for different types of workloads. So for stateless, we have a, a federation layer known as up. For batch, we have our own federation layer known as batch federator. I would recommend everyone to see the talk on batch federation on KubeCon uh, 2023 North America, which, uh, in which my colleagues talked about the batch federation layer. Our uh, compute platform has been constant, uh, consistently evolving throughout. Uh, we were based on uh, Mesos and our in-house uh, scheduler known as uh, Peloton. And over the year, we have transitioned to Kubernetes. Below the stack, we have our presence across multiple cloud providers, such as OCI and GCP. And we have our on-prem data centers as well, where we run our own uh, hosts. The overview for GPU use uh, at Uber is uh, like this. We use, uh, we use GPUs for model training uh, for our AI and ML workloads. We have uh, data science notebooks, which are used for exploratory data science work. So for example, if you're a machine learning scientist or a data scientist and you need like access to a GPU, you can just launch a session, work on that session, have the access to the GPU, and return it back to the cluster. Uh, some like uh, use cases include uh, for the models that we train, like ETA prediction, so you, you'll be able to see on the app like how long will it take for your uh, cab or food to arrive, or how long will you be uh, reaching to your destination. So we have ETA prediction models. We also have LLM-based chatbots, which will do uh, automated customer support. And we have uh, LLM use cases for our own internal, uh, internal users. Uh, in terms of scale, we have more than 4,000 GPUs. And we have about 50,000 jobs which run every week on those GPUs. Uh, in terms of GPU models, it's kind of like a mixed bag. We have NVIDIA H100s, NVIDIA A100s, some Quadro RTX 4000, and some 1080 Ti's. So it's uh, like modern GPUs as well as some legacy uh, GPUs as well. So yeah, this is what a uh, cluster level overview for a GPU uh, cluster looks like at Uber. So we have an in-house component uh, known as Kubernetes Object Pusher which is responsible for syncing the NVIDIA device uh, plugin daemon set spec to all the clusters. Uh, it reads from uh, a repository where we describe the spec for the device plugin. Uh, once that spec is synced, uh, the device plugin daemon set pod get la gets launched on the node. And we are able to advertise GPU resources to, uh, to, uh, to, the, to the cluster. Uh, the device plugin on the kubelet communicate via Unix socket as standard. On the node level, uh, this is what it looks like. We use the NVIDIA container toolkit. 
which uh, contains the implementation of the alternate uh, container runtime. Our, our container runtime on production is mostly based out of container D. So we have configured container D with, uh, uh, to be able to hook into the NVIDIA container runtime whenever we receive a pod which has uh, the runtime class name as NVIDIA. If it does not, uh, it goes through the default runtime. So those are mostly stateless pod and non-GPU workloads. We also use uh, C Advisor for being able to uh, monitor GPU metrics. Uh, we have a wrapper written on top of C Advisor to be able to uh, label the metrics on a workload level because we want to do attribution of uh, what jobs are basically using what GPUs. So for example, here, here's a, here's a, here's a screenshot of a job which is using four GPUs. And those four GPUs are uh, like they span across two pods, and those two, two pods each have two GPUs across different nodes. Yeah, so now that you have set up your clusters to be able to use GPUs, life should be fine, but uh, unfortunately it isn't. You will, uh, once you're able to just set up your clusters for GPU workloads, you come into requirements for efficiency and precision. I'll get into detail for uh, how that happens here. So first you need to support a heterogeneous cluster. So a cluster can have CPU only and GPU nodes as well. And theoretically, uh, CPU workloads can run on GPU nodes. It's not the best utilization of them. So uh, your, uh, your cluster should be able to support heterogeneous nodes. That, that would be one requirement. Uh, we uh, came into this requirement uh, mostly when uh, our, our machine learning scientists sort of wanted to use Ray jobs. Ray is a framework by any scale where you can launch a job which can have CPU-only uh, workloads on some pods and GPU-dedicated workloads on some other pods. You have to be able to support multiple stock keeping units for GPUs. So GPU workloads should be sh scheduled on the right SKU based on what the customer is asking for. And the workloads which do not require a specific GPU SKU should not be running on those uh, specialized GPU SKUs. You would also need to minimize the fragmentation of GPU resources to be able to schedule efficiently. So I'll get into details of all of these sections in the slides later. Yeah, so when you have to support heterogeneous clusters, the key points here is that GPU resources are limited and they are costly. So you don't want to like waste uh, GPU resources by running non-GPU workloads on them. And uh, here, as you can see in this uh, example, we have a cluster where a CPU-only pod is scheduled on a GPU node. This tends to happen if you just like, let the cluster run amok, and you don't have any guardrails in place to uh, avoid this. So as you can see, a CPU pod is running on a GPU node, and a general GPU pod will anyways run on a GPU node. Uh, there's also one catch that you need your device plugin to be able to run on only GPU nodes and not CPU nodes because that's not optimal. Also, your device plugin will just keep crashing in, the case, uh, in, the, in that particular case. So how do you solve that? Well, there can be multiple solutions to do this. Uh, first, you can use to, uh, first you can node, uh, label your GPUs to be able to advertise that you have a GPU on this node and what kinds of uh, GPUs are there. Uh, node labeling, uh, in our case, I mean, you can use different solutions. As uh, I think uh, Kevin and Shiva mentioned, you can use uh, NFD. Uh, for us, we use a custom way of uh, labeling uh, GPU nodes. We already have an on-host daemon which uses NVIDIA libraries to fetch the information about the GPUs. At boot time, when we uh, launch the kubelet, there's a wrapper which calls to that daemon, gets the information about the GPU nodes, uh, parses it, and labels the node uh, uh, once the kubelet is booted. Once, once you have labeled your GPU nodes, you need to add the necessary uh, node selectors to the pods of your device plugin so that your device plugin only runs on those, uh, uh, runs on those uh, GPU nodes. And uh, you need to, uh, you, you can use a GPU management filter plugin to basically ensure resource isolation between CPU workloads and uh, GPU workloads. Just a bit of context here. What do I mean when I say a GPU management filter plugin? So Kubernetes allows you to write uh, plugins for various points in the, uh, in the scheduling cycle of a pod. 
So when, when, you, uh, when I say I write a filter plugin, what I mean is like a filter plugin will basically uh, filter out any candidate nodes which are uh, not suitable for this particular pod, uh, pod scheduling. So here, it, uh, what it looks like uh, uh, when I say if, we, if you have to implement a GPU filter plugin. So if you have a pod which is not requesting GPUs, uh, the GPU filter plugin will filter out all GPU nodes from its possible candidate replacements. And uh, your, uh, your CPU-only workloads will only run on your CPU nodes. If you have a pod which is requesting for GPUs, it will, uh, it will be a no-op, and it will directly get uh, scheduled on uh, GPU nodes. Uh, so the, the GPU management filter plugin is sort of a no-op for GPU resources. Well, once you've uh, ensured the isolation between CPU and GPU nodes, you think that, uh, again, life should be comfortable. But again, unfortunately, it is not. The reason for that is now you have another problem where you have to support multiple types of uh, GPU SKUs in the same clusters. So your uh, product teams would come up to you saying that now we want to train LLMs, and LLM training requires specialized hardware, for example, uh, NVIDIA A100s. And the best use case for training those LLMs, uh, like uh, best use case for using those uh, uh, specialized hardware is to train like certain GPU workloads and not let anything uh, else run on that for, uh, for some reason. Well, and uh, I mean, you could potentially uh, run uh, generic GPU workloads on those specialized hardware, but again, it's not a very, uh, very optimal use case for, for those uh, workloads. Also, GPU features like uh, differ completely uh, on the SKU types, so not all GPUs are created equal. Uh, some GPUs have more VRAM, some GPU have, uh, have different kinds of compute. Each of the GPUs cost uh, a different amount, so you so sort of have to do this cost optimization when you're a platform. And uh, one more key thing was that model accuracy is highly dependent on the kind of SKUs that you use. So if you train your workloads on a certain kind of SKU, uh, we've seen in, in production that uh, the model accuracy varies by a few percentage points. So as you can see here in the cluster, we have, since we have ensured that CPU-only workloads will run on CPU nodes and GPU workloads will run on GPU nodes, the CPU pods are fine. But if you have a generic GPU workload, it can get scheduled on specialized GPUs, but you have to pre uh, like prevent that. So again, uh, how, how, how can you address this problem? Well, you can, again, write a new filter, filter plugin, which is called the Specialized GPU Management Filter Plugin. So plugin one will be your uh, global GPU management filter plugin. It filters out all, GP, uh, all GPU nodes from a pod which does not request those. The plugin two will be a specialized uh, a GPU management filter plugin, which will filter out all the specialized GPUs from any pod which is just requ requesting for general uh, GPU resources and does not want to be placed on a specific SKU. And at the end, like uh, we have uh, placement strategies based on node selectors. So if your pod is specially requesting for, let's say I want to run on an A100, you put a node selector there, and uh, your pod will accordingly get placed. What does this do? So once, once you have done this, you are able to isolate between CPU nodes, generate GPU nodes, and specialized GPU nodes. This ensures better hardware utilization in our clusters. And obviously, once we are able to schedule uh, workloads on the right uh, nodes, we are able to achieve better model accuracy. This also gives us cost savings, because uh, obviously we are able to utilize the hardware better. Uh, the last time we did some evaluation on the kind of cost savings that it gives us, it was around half a million dollars a year. OK, now since you've done that, you're able to isolate resources. Uh, you should be able to uh, like rest, and, uh, rest, on, rest on your laurels. But again, you see another problem. Uh, and the problem is uh, based on GPU fragmentation. What tends to happen in our use case uh, with uh, scheduling other kinds of workload was that we used to prefer load-aware placement. When we say load-aware placement, we try to place the workloads on the nodes which are uh, not uh, being utilized uh, to the fullest so that we ensure like there's a uniform utilization of uh, resources across our clusters. Uh, this works well in the, uh, in the CPU world. But in the GPU world, what that results in is fragmentation. So here you can see if you have a cluster, uh, 
uh, we have nine GPUs available to, uh, to schedule your workloads, but if you want to place a pod which requires more than two GPUs, you won't be able to place uh, the particular pod uh, in the cluster, and we've had complaints from our customers uh, saying that even though I have GPU resources in the cluster, I I'm not able to schedule uh, my pods because uh, of this fragmentation issue. So how do you uh, mitigate fragmentation? Well, you could use something like bin packing placement. So Kubernetes, uh, by default, uh, has a node resource fit plugin. That node resource fit plugin, uh, like you can uh, alter the node resource fit plugin to use the most allocated strategy so that you're able to bin pack your workloads uh, closer. And then, as you can see, you have uh, nodes uh, available with more than uh, three GPUs, so your, uh, your pod can be placed on those nodes. Uh, with that being said, I'm not, I'm not saying that we have completely solved the fragmentation problem in our clusters. The reason for that is it's more of an art than a science because you have multiple scorers uh, inside your uh, cluster competing for the uh, placement, and then you have to tune the weights of different kinds of scheduler plugins that you write so that uh, you don't run into issues. Well, so now you are able to isolate resources. You have to, you're able to schedule uh, workloads on the appropriate SKUs, you're, uh, and you're able to bin pack your workloads. You should be fine with most of the, uh, most of the scenarios that you see. But then, like, life is not, again, so easy. You run into some common pitfalls. Uh, pitfalls is just a fancy name for bugs that we encountered along the way. So, yeah, well, uh, one of the pitfalls that we found maybe like after a week of deploying the plugins was that uh, yeah we uh, the device plugin pod and the filter plugin do not play very well, uh, and the reason for that was really simple. Uh, I'll get into the reason first. So what basically happens is like when your node joins uh, the cluster, uh, it it is effectively like a CPU node. You don't have uh, GPU resources being advertised on your uh, node. And you have the uh, GPU filter plugin in place. Once uh, the daemon set spec is synced uh, and the daemon set pod gets scheduled on that no particular node, you start to advertise uh, the GPU uh, resources on that particular node, and all is well. But what happens when that particular uh, NVIDIA daemon set pod, uh, for, so for some reason, let's say, cra uh, crashes, or you're trying to upgrade your NVIDIA daemon set, uh, device plugin daemon set? you run into the issue of uh, the, the GPU filter plugin sort of interrupting uh, your NVIDIA device plugin pod to be placed. So basically, the, the GPU filter plugin was, like, is the, uh, was, was making a decision that is the pod requesting for GPUs, and is the node a GPU node? And if uh, that's the case, uh, then I don't want to schedule a pod on this node, because device plugin essentially is a CPU-only workload. Well, that's not ideal. So for, for, uh, just, just for the simplicity of the solution, you can add an exception for your device plugin pod in your, uh, in your uh, GPU management filter plugin. And it just not only applies to device plugin pod. It applies to all the system pods that need to run on your GPU node, but those are not, CPU, not GPU workloads. Another common pitfall that we encountered was that pods requesting for more than GPUs than, than uh, they are available on a node. So for example, we have a cluster here. It's a theoretical cluster. We have nodes with four GPUs, six GPUs, and eight GPUs. And if a pod tries to place a workload, which contains overall 10 GPUs, uh, what used to happen was like the, it, it, would go through, uh, it would go through the admission control. And uh, we'll try to place the workload on the cluster. And we'll, ha we'll uh, go through multiple scheduling attempts. And we'll keep on facing placement failures, uh, because essentially no node can accommodate this pod. Well, uh, and, and uh, if, if no node can accommodate this particular pod, uh, you get alerted that your job has been stuck for a while, and you, you cannot run your, uh, run your workloads. Well, what you could possibly do is to prevent the admission of such pods in your cluster, which contain more than what, uh, which contain the request for resources, more than of what uh, your 
particular cluster at that point, time can, point of time can uh, provide. Uh, this can also be solved at the federation layer, but I'm just talking about on a cluster level. So if, if you try to place a pod which requests for 10 GPUs and your cluster does not have a node which can accommodate 10 GPUs, you just deny admission of that particular pod. Well, it's again not so simple because you can't just hard code saying that, okay, in my particular cluster, I have pod which has, uh, I have nodes which can support eight uh, GPUs, so I'll just hard code eight and then ask uh, users to send their workloads. And uh, uh, once the scheduling happens, I'll be able to uh, deny admission to, uh, to pods which contain more than uh, eight uh, GPUs. Because your cluster essentially is a living entity, nodes keep coming in and nodes keep going out. So tomorrow you can have a node which contains 16 GPUs or I don't know, 10 GPUs, and uh, or or your eight node, uh, uh, sorry, eight GPU node can move out of the cluster for some repairs or like in maintenance. So how do you uh, do that? Well, you can write an admission check using a node informer. So you will watch of all, like on this particular cluster, I'll watch for node updates. I'll keep account of the maximum number of GPUs that a node can have. Uh, uh, th th that a one node has in this particular cluster, my admission uh, admission control check will just validate that is my uh, is my pod requesting for a uh, number of GPUs which is higher than a node can supply? If yes, uh, then I just like deny admission. If not, then I allow the pod to be admitted. This is a very simplified uh, simplified solution. We also need to take into account the fact that your node, uh, your pod spec also contains init containers. And when you have init containers, uh, it, uh, you, you need to evaluate the maximum of an init container as, a, as opposed to like the sum of uh, the number of GPUs that are uh, being uh, requested by your pods, uh, requested by your containers. Okay. Uh, another thing that uh, you would probably run into is the fact that you have uh, privileged containers running in your clusters. So just for a bit of context, a privileged container uh, is a container which has elevated privileges, and these are not limited by your container runtime. If you run privileged containers on your, uh, on your cluster, apart from just the security risks that are associated with uh, running such containers, you'll be uh, seeing that a privileged container has access to basically all the GPUs on a particular node. And uh, this affects resource attribution. It also affects uh, your uh, metrics in terms of what GPUs are accessible to this particular uh, container. And uh, yeah, you run into problems. Well, the, we took a decision uh, to avoid su running such containers into our clusters. The, the necessary use cases for Privileged containers are governed by some other route of deployment rather than uh, Kubernetes. So we do another admission check. We say that if the pod has uh, privileged capabilities, for example, it has CAPSIS admin or CAPSIS ch root or anything like that, uh, we just deny admission to it. Also, if the pod security context allows it to its privileges to be escalated, we do not uh, uh, admit such pods into our clusters as well. And if everything is no, then it's a no op, and your pods can get placed. So yeah, I'll just briefly talk about the future work that we plan on doing. Uh, we plan on supporting fractional GPUs. So in our current setup, GPUs cannot be shared by containers. Uh, with that being said, we do uh, train multiple models on our uh, single GPUs using software techniques, such as uh, low rank resource attribution. Uh, Workloads, uh, if uh, they are not able to uh, like fully utilize the GPU, will essentially waste resources. So we are planning to use MIGs in order to uh, in order to enhance the uh, like utilization of GPUs in our clusters. We found use cases of certain inference workloads which scale well with MIGs. So yeah, the plan is to support this. In the future, we also uh, plan to support multiple GPU vendors like Intel and AMD. The few reasons that we are planning to do this is because of price to performance ratios of certain workloads with these different uh, GPU providers. These providers have open source drivers in stack, 
and the device plugin for these uh, uh, these uh, vendors are also open source, so you can uh, just check them out. With that being said, I don't expect it to be very smooth, uh, just like uh, the experience that we've had with NVIDIA GPUs. Just a bit of a shameless plug, this is the team that has worked on uh, most of these features. Feel free to reach out to us on uh, LinkedIn uh, if you have any questions or feedback. And uh, with that being said, I'll open the floor for questions if you have any, and please scan the QR code if you have any uh, feedback for the session. Thank you. You have mentioned uh, Ray. Are you using CubeRay for uh, Ray? And are you using Ray Serve? I'm sorry, uh, can you repeat the question? Are yes, you have mentioned Ray at the beginning. I guess that you are using the, the Ray framework on Kubernetes, CubeRay? Yeah, so we are using uh, uh, yeah, Ray workloads. Uh, those are running on our clusters to train the machine learning uh, uh, models. So we uh, we have uh, multiple uh, sorts of bad jobs that run on uh, run on our clusters. One of them is Ray, which is like a, a framework by any scale. Yeah. Exactly, and I think that there is an option to use fractional GPUs with Ray, right? I, and are you using uh, anything other than Ray, than Ray Serve? Because currently, what we are using is mainly serving the ML models with Ray Serve, nothing else. So I guess that you are using also Ray jobs. Yes, there are Ray jobs. Uh, there are also Spark jobs. Uh, so, like, yeah, it's 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 uh, multiple sort of uh, jobs that run on the batch platform. It's not just uh, Ray. Yeah. Super nice. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for the talk. Uh, I just want to. Uh, I have like two questions. The sure. first one: um, Are you separating federation layer based on CPU and GPU workloads? Is that what you meant on the first slide? Oh, so yeah, our federation layer. Uh, like, so the, the question is that are we separating GPU and CPU clusters? Uh, like when you said you have separate federation layer. Yeah, we have separate federation layer, but it's uh, mostly on job types. So we have a, a federation layer for stateless workloads, which run like microservices and uh, uh, other things. And we have a separate federation layer for batch workloads, which run these uh, like bad jobs, like Spark jobs, Ray jobs, and other machine learning models. I see, I see. For, for batch workload, uh, how are you guys approaching like queuing uh, batch workloads on the federation layer? I see, so uh, that's a good question. Uh, for, for, uh, we already have a, a batch federation will through something called a multi-cluster federator. So what that fed, fed, uh, federation layer does is it admits the job from the customers, which uh, and then it's tr it tries to distribute the uh, job to the appropriate clusters, depending on the uh, resources available uh, in those clusters uh, in, the, in this sort of a, like a multi-cluster queue. So it will redirect the job to the appropriate cluster depending on the uh, amount of resources that particular cluster has. So yeah, I would encourage you to watch the KubeCon Chicago uh, North America talk uh, if you want to learn more about the federation layer for batch that we have at Uber. I'll link it in the in the presentation as well. Awesome, thanks. Just just one final follow-up question. Sure. Um, if you could share more on like what is what are you guys prioritizing in terms of that queue? Are you guys pr prioritizing fair sharing or yeah. maximum GPU utilization rate, etc.? Uh, yes, we have that fair sharing model. Uh, I can maybe uh, like get back to you on the details of how that fair sharing works on a cluster level. I am mostly part of the platform team which runs uh, uh, like the, the workloads on Kubernetes clusters. That, that uh, federation layer sits on top of the platform. Awesome, thank you. Thank you very much. Sure. Hi, thank you so much for a great talk. Um, I have a question, I'm just curious. Yeah. If you follow all the best practices and avoid those pitfalls, yeah. what is the highest CPU and GPU utilization in the cluster that you've seen? Oh, so that's a really nice question. Uh, when it comes to uh, CPU utilization, we are highly over-provisioned. 
we are still working on uh, like uh, improving the overall uh, C uh, CPU utilization across our clusters. Uh, but just to answer your question, uh, majority of our workloads are probably like the number of uh, uh, the peak CPU utilization that reaches in a cluster is close to like 80 percent. So yeah, you can always you, you can never really reach like uh, uh, a very high CPU utilization be because uh, uh, then you will run into issues with the services being able to not perform as expected. Uh, and when it comes to the GPU utilization, I think we we were like like when it comes to utilization more than 50 to 70 but like never never beyond 80 so yeah thank you so much okay. okay thank you very much for your time guys